Add a personalized touch to your greeting cards this holiday season with CardsDirect.com. Design your customized cards on CardsDirect.com slash real simple and save 25% off instantly at checkout. But don't wait. The holidays are just weeks away. Shop over 5,000 holiday products. Express shipping options are available. Order today. CardsDirect.com slash real simple. Hello and welcome to I Want to Like You, a weekly podcast from Real Simple about how to handle the irritating people in your life with goodwill and grace. I'm Kristen Van Ogtrop. I'm the editor of Real Simple, and with me today are Tina Gilbertson, who is a psychotherapist and the author of Constructive Wallowing, and Jonathan Hay, who is a celebrity publicist and record producer. Welcome, you two. It's great to be here. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. So this week we're talking about secretive people, which is why we have a psychotherapist and someone who works regularly with celebrities. But, you know, we were just talking about the fact that secretive people is a fairly broad category of people and probably means different things to different people. So I thought I would start out just by quickly explaining a relationship that I had when I was in my early 20s with a friend who I'm no longer friends with, and in part because she was very secretive. And I don't mean, I don't even know if she she had anything interesting to hide, but, but we had this relationship where she constantly wanted me to tell her all of the intimate details of my life, you know, in terms of what I was going, what was, you know, what was happening with me with relationships and with school and jobs and everything. This was when I was at the end of my college years. And, but she would never tell me anything about herself. Mm. And it was bizarre. And, and, and it took me a while because I'm such a dope and, you know, a fairly naive person among many other things (laughs) or just not observant. I don't know, Tina, you could probably explain what my issue is, but it took me a long time to realize that that was the dynamic in our relationship. And then it started making me kind of mad because it felt like she had all of the control or all of the information without giving, it wasn't an equal relationship. So when I think of secretive people and how they're irritating, that's what I think of people who just don't, who won't give you information for reasons that kind of aren't clear and have more to do with them kind of, I don't know, wanting to have some some kind of weird control over you. So, Jonathan, what do you think? When you think of a secretive person, what does that mean to you? Well, you know, I was born into this world as a secret. My, you know, I was adopted. You know, my biological mother, she was a teenager. She was 19. And so she kept me as a secret, like, because she was heavyset. Mm -hmm. So up until six, seven months of her pregnancy, you know, it was a secret. Like I went to her senior prom. I went to like, I I, I did all these things. So I don't know if it's in my DNA, you know, just to be a secretive person because, you know, I I, I could, I could be that friend you described and it wouldn't be any, it it wouldn't be anything. It wouldn't be anything against you. It's just, you know, like my genetic makeup, maybe, you know what I mean? So maybe it wasn't any, I don't know. That's interesting. Do you, but you probably, I mean, how old were you when you found out that story about your biological mother? Um, I was, you know, there's, I sometimes, I always have a different answer because I'm not for sure. I remember exactly where I was when my mom told me. Mm -hmm. Um, But sometimes I feel like I was 11 or I could have been, you know, my mom tells me I was younger, eight, but it seems like I was 11, Mm -hmm. you know, but obviously that changed everything. You know, um, you know, your uncles and your cousins and, you know, people who, you know, your aunts and all that, all of a sudden they feel like strangers, you know, because they're not part of your, your blood, you know? All right. So Tina, question for you, given what Jonathan just said, you know, that he thinks maybe this might be even part of his DNA, you know, do you, I mean, when you are a secretive person, whether you're the friend I described in college I mean, Jonathan's mother is a is a specific case, right? Because she had something really specific she had to hide. But, yeah. but is this something that you is just a, this an inborn character trait, or is this something that over time and an experience, either good or bad experience, develops in a person? I think I think it's probably most likely to be some combination of of um, what you're born with and what you grow up with. Mm-hmm. So you know, people do have temperaments that are maybe make them a little bit less likely to just blurt stuff out and share. Mm-hmm. You know, they may be naturally more on the, on the uh, 
retiring side. And then uh, other times, or at the same time, people can grow up in environments where they just kind of figure out over time that it's really not worth sharing because you're not going to get something good back or you're not going to get anything back or for whatever reason. You just learn not to share. Now, Jonathan, so I don't want... I. I didn't. I actually didn't invite you onto this podcast to be like the poster child for secretive people. <laughs> but it, it was more about your what you do professionally. But do you mind if I ask you one more personal question and just tell me if you don't want to answer it? No, you're fine. Absolutely. Um, do you feel like so being if you would characterize yourself as a secretive person? Do you think that that or, or I guess I should say, how does that impact your relationships with people? Well, usually they don't know because I'm, I'm, I'm good at the keeping the secrets. You know what I mean? It just, it, it really depends. You know. Um, do you feel like have do people accuse you of not opening up enough about what's really going on with you? That that kind of thing. I guess I mean, like, are there people who have wanted to to get closer to you or get to know you better, and and they there has been a roadblock there because that's, you know, you, this is sort of how you are. I'm both, uh, you know, both as well. So I can be totally transparent in a relationship, you know, but also, you know, keep a secret, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know, you know, it's just, uh, I really don't know, to be honest with you. Okay. So here's another question, I guess, for both of you okay. are people who are secretive, better at keeping other people's secrets necessarily like i guess this is a question for you jonathan like if you work with you know musicians and other celebrities who i mean i'm thinking about and sorry i'm gonna get really off track here but like the lamar odom situation of a couple of weeks ago where i read in the new york post of course the that bastion of editorial integrity and solid information about how after, you know, when he was in at that place, whatever we call it, like some some person came in and like cleaned out his room, like a fixer kind of person, I guess. And who, you know, so, so, and I thought, wow, that must be such a weird, interesting job to have, to be the person who knows the secrets, right, but has to protect the secrets. So do you, you know, in thinking, Jonathan, about, and I'm not saying that you are the person who goes and cleans out the motel room, but, but, you know, in your job, do you feel like you oftentimes have to protect the people that you work with? And is that super hard? Absolutely. Because, you know, you get, you get close to them and then they'll open it, you know, they'll open up, you know, and they'll tell you something. Then as a, you know, as the publicist mind, because, you know, that's what you're there to do, you know, for the client is, you know, sometimes I'll open up and it's like, oh, wow, you know, we should, you know, reveal that we should share that. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no, you know, no, this is a secret, you know, this is off record. And, you know, this is that. And, you know, um, so, you know, it gets it, 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 it gets it kind of hard. So, yeah, I seem like, um, you know, like I've never, I've never even thought about you know, what we're talking about here, like, you know, because I, I, I do have so many, like, secrets or, you know, off the record or, you know, whatever stuff that, you know, I'm, I'm never supposed to share with people. And I wonder if that is because of, you know, how I was born, like that, going back to that genetic makeup. Like, I just thought of that, like, as soon as we started talking about it. So it's kind of it's kind of fascinating to me, you know. And Tina, what do you think? Do you think people who are secretive about themselves are... Is there any correlation between that behavior or that that trait and being able to protect other secrets, other people's secrets better? I imagine that that has to do with what motivates the secret keeping. Like, if it's unconscious, if you're right. kind of just unconsciously secretive, then maybe, maybe not. But if, on the other hand, let's say you're, and, you know, this may sound a little weird, but a lot of people are trained in intelligence. Mm -hmm. and they are trained to not reveal anything while finding out maybe this was your friend you know maybe she was intel intelligent yeah right exactly she was a but, spy uh, yeah <laughs> apparently it's really hard to uh, shake that training in social situations i can't even imagine okay so here's another question for you and this is tina mm -hmm. if you and this is a this is a conversation that i have with work colleagues certain work colleagues from time to time is there a way to gauge, it, you know, in, other than through trial and error, if 
a person that you know or work with or are friendly with is good at keeping secrets. You know, we all make a calculation, right? When we decide to tell someone something that is sensitive or confidential and and sometimes you know through by experience, oh, this person's going to keep this secret for me. Yeah, for sure. But is there a way to, you know, it's, but it's a calculation every time, right? How do you know, like how do Jonathan's clients know, for example, to trust Jonathan? How do, how do you know whether you can trust a friend or a coworker if you haven't had a lot of experience with that person? Is there a way to know? Well, sure. I mean, are they telling you everybody else's secrets is the best way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if they're telling you everybody <laughs> else's secrets, everybody else is going to hear yours. Oh, man, that is so hard because you're right. And, and, I, and unfortunately, sometimes the people who tell you a lot of secrets are really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're interesting to listen to, but you maybe want to be a little secretive around them. Jonathan, have you ever had a situation where someone told you something in, in a professional setting and you thought to yourself, oh, man, I wish they hadn't told me that? Yes, because... Sometimes, and like this sounds bad, this is, you know, because, you know, PR mind, you know, because I, I want to, you know, because I want to, you know, and, and not not like every instant in general, but, you know, sometimes, you know, people have told me something, a secret, and it's just like, man, you know, this would be, you know, th- this, would, this would be great for people to know. This would be a great party, you know, the client's story or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. This podcast is sponsored by CardsDirect.com. You know what's coming. The holidays are only weeks away, and before you're busy with gifts and parties, it's time to order your personalized greeting cards. CardsDirect.com provides custom holiday cards for both businesses and families, so you can send something truly unique this Christmas. Shop over 5,000 holiday products. They make it easy to order and offer express shipping options. Right now, Adulthood Made Easy listeners will receive an exclusive 25% off automatically this season when they visit cardsdirect.com slash real simple. Order today and tell them that we sent you. Cardsdirect.com slash real simple. You know, in, in our in our world, in our celebrity world now, and in our reality TV world, do you think, I want to start with Jonathan, but Tina, I'd love to get your answer here too. Do you think the notion of secret keeping is diminishing a little bit? You know, like there's so much that's just out there. There's so many people who, who everything is kind of out there for public consumption. Do you think that we as a society are less secretive than than we were, say, you know, 25 years ago. Absolutely, because of social media and there's so much more impulse, you know, that, that, that you can do. Whereas, you know, before, you know, you could, you know, keep a secret, you know, but now, you know, because you didn't have the, the avenues to, you know, really express yourself. But now it's like, you know, people just air out all their stuff on Facebook, which should be secrets and social media and share their whole life. And you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, it's a lot more impulsive now, you know? And what, so what do you think, Tina? I agree with Jonathan. I think, um, that secret keeping for, for, for particularly because on social media, but is, it seems to be on the rise, especially with juicy stuff that is going to give you social capital. Mm. Somebody who's interesting to hear from. There's there's reinforcement now for telling your secrets. Can you give an example of what you're talking about? Well, the person who um, they writes a blog post about something very very personal is a person who gets a hundred comments in the first day. You know, saying "Me too." Mm-hmm. So that's that's very reinforcing for that kind of sharing. Okay, so here's a question. We're we're getting to the end of our time here, but but. So going back to kind of the notion of making a calculation, if you're a person, whether you are, you know, a celebrity, like the kind of person that Jonathan works with, and actually I'd like to hear from both of you on this, but Tina, let's start with you. Or you are just a regular person who has kind of an extraordinary story. 
and you're you're trying to decide do I write that blog post do I put this on Facebook I know it's going to go you know the internet's going to explode or you know or my little version of the internet's going to explode but I mean as as you both know like social media is a fairly fleeting venue and how do you decide if what you're going to reveal even though you might get a ton of buzz for you know a week or two weeks or a day or an afternoon or whatever how do you decide if it's worth if it's going to be worth it you know it is fleeting in a sense and it's permanent in another very real sense you might want to ask yourself before you tweet something or post it will my grandchildren be excited to see this or my future mother-in-law or yeah, my exactly. yeah right Jonathan what do you think how do you how do you make that calculation with your clients hmm I mean, I'm um, assuming you're in, you get in that situation sometimes, right? Where you think, you you know, you mentioned a couple of minutes ago, you have people who've told you something, and you've thought, oh well, I wish I hadn't. They hadn't told me that because I, the impulse is, what could we get out of it if we used it or we made this public? You know, how do you how do you make the calculation when it's worth revealing something or not? Um, you 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 just kind of, you know, you just kind of um, feel them out. Yeah. You know, and and, it, and it's kind of and it's kind of awkward dynamic because you know people get you know they get close to you clients or whatever, and then you you know ask them be like oh you know can we use that for you know a PR angle or something you know and then you can see them like get offended and it's like you know <laughs> not uh, offended but right. you know not offended but you know like you, you know can I trust this person so so it's strange you know it's a very strange you know the secret is a very fascinating topic you know well and that's a perfect way to end right the the secret is a very fascinating topic and and changes constantly i think in our culture as we've talked about and really from person to person right. um so today we have heard from tina gilbertson psychotherapist and author of constructive wallowing and jonathan hay secretive person and celebrity publicist <laughs> and record producer <laughs> that is it for this week's episode of of i, of I want to like you Thank you, Tina and Jonathan, for being with me. Thank you. Our producer is Tim Einenkel, and I get a lot of help on this podcast from Caitlin Peary at Real Simple. So thanks to both of them. Please let us know what you think of the show. Our Twitter handle is at Real Simple, or you can tweet ideas for this podcast directly to me at KVanOgTrop. For more on irritating people and how to handle them, go to realsimple.com. And of course, please subscribe to us in iTunes. For Tina Gilbertson and Jonathan Hay, I'm Kristen Van Ogtrop. Thanks for joining us.